It is fourth and final lecture of chapter 16. The main purpose of this lecture is to explain you two very important theorems called Stokes and Darwin's theorems. Okay. Before that, you should know about an important definition that is oriented surface. What is the meaning of oriented surface? A surface for which you can identify the two faces clearly. See this surface, a bound kind of surface. You can easily identify the outer surface and the inner surface. Okay. But what about this surface? Let me show you a non-oriented surface. You are seeing this, you are seeing this vertical, uh, this rectangular strip. If I join the two ends directly, like this, you can identify the inner face of the surface as well as outer face. Correct. What if I join the two ends like this? I give a twist and then join the two. Look at this surface. Now, if you move along the surface, you can move along the whole surface without, without any problem at one go. You have a continuous unit normal vector at each point. Okay? Means if you start painting this surface with a brush, at one go you can do it, but you cannot do there. Alright? So now you cannot identify the two faces of the surface. Main point is that. You go like this you will see that it is only one face surface. So a surface which has only one face, okay, you cannot identify inner face or outer face, such a surface is non-oriented. So I hope you understand it. We will talk about oriented surfaces, like cylindrical surface, spherical surface. So I hope you understand it. Next thing, you should recall the Green's theorems. Those would be helpful to understand Stokes and Darwin's theorems. Green's theorem. There are two forms of this theorem. First is tangential form. What is it? If F is a vector field having continuous first order partial derivatives in an open region carrying a piecewise smooth surface, piecewise smooth closed curves, the node surface, then counterclockwise circulation of F along C is given by the alternative formula that is double integral of curl of F dot k cap dx dy we can write because it is plane region. Situation is like this you have a piecewise smooth simple closed curve C enclosing the region R. It is an XY plane. Okay? So, counterclockwise circulation of F along C is given by double integral of curl of F dot K cap over the region R. So, this theorem provides an alternative formula for finding circulation of F along C. That is the result. What if your curve is not in plane? Say it is in space like this. And 
and the this region R is also in space in the form of a surface, say S. Then how can we get the circulation of F along C? That is what we call Stokes theorem. So I'm reading the statement of Stokes theorem. If F is a vector field having continuous first order partial derivatives in an open region carrying a carrying a piecewise smooth open surface S which is open okay, with boundary with piecewise smooth boundary C then counterclockwise circulation of F along C with respect to the unit normal vector N cap means f dot t cap ds count clockwise circulation of f along c with respect to the unit normal vector n cap is given by double integral of or you can say surface integral of curl of f over s see the difference between the two this curve is in plane, this curve is in space. Calculating the same thing, counterclockwise circulation. How the formula changes? Instead of R, plane area R, you have surfaces. Okay? Curl F is same, K cap goes to N cap, more generalized vector. Here N cap you can understand. A unit normal vector to XY plane, that is K cap. So you can say that Stokes theorem is generalization of the tangential form of Graves theorem. Okay, so that is the connection between the two. You should understand it. Another thing, what is the meaning of circulation of F along C, counterclockwise circulation of F along C with respect to the unit normal vector and cap? That you should understand. We call it in space, so how should you choose the direction of n cap C? Suppose these two fingers show the orientation of orientation of C, then this shows the direction of n cap. Make a right handed triangle. Very simple to choose your n cap with respect to C. Okay? If this these two fingers show the orientation of C, then this is the direction of N cap. If you change, then it gets reversed. All right, so you understand this. Another thing, whatever is the shape of the surface, say it is another surface S1, but bounding curve is same. The result does not change. Here, in place of S, you can write S1. This integral gives the answer of both these surface integrals. Okay, this could be helpful in some problems. You should know it. All right. Okay, so you understand now Stokes theorem. Let us discuss one more theorem that is Darwin's theorem. We will see that that is generalization of normal form of Gray's theorem. Let us see how. What is normal form of Green's theorem? Recall that. Again, same situation. F is a vector field having continuous first order partial derivatives in an open region carrying a piecewise smooth simple closed curve C and closing the region R. Then, outward flux of F across C is given by the double integral of divergence of f over r. So this term provides an alternative formula for getting outer flux of f across c. All right. What if you have what if you have 
a closed surface in space instead of this closed curve in plane, if you have a closed surface in space and you are interested in finding flux of a vector field across this whole surface, say it is oriented by n cap, then how can you get flux of f across s, outward flux of f across s. You know this is the formula for flux. Davidge's theorem provides an alternative formula for finding this flux. What is that? Flux of f or outer flux of f across s is given by the triple integral of divergence of f over the region B enclosed by this closed surface S. Okay. Do the comparisons now. Instead of plane curve C, you have this closed surface in space. Here, instead of double integral, it is triple integral. Why? Because it is a region in space. So you understand this generalization, okay? So Davidge's theorem is generalization of normal form of Green's theorem. Now, let us do some problems to verify Stokes and Davidge's theorems. Before that, you should know that it is oriented surface, closed surface, and end cap is outward pointing unit normal vector. All right. Here it is open surface. In Stokes theorem, it is open surface with boundary C. So Stokes theorem is applicable on open surface with boundary C, but it is applicable on closed surface. At least you can remember the basic things. All right, so let's do a problem on Stokes theorem first. Verify Stokes theorem. Verify Stokes theorem for the vector field f equal to y i cap minus x j cap over over the surface of the hemisphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to nine z greater than equal to zero with bounding circle with bounding circle x square plus y square equal to nine in x y plane you understand the given surface it is hemisphere above x y plane and this is the bounding circle x square plus y square equal to nine this is S. So this is your C, you can say. We are choosing this orientation, that means N cap goes like this. If you change the orientation, then you have to choose N cap inner side. All right. So now to verify Stokes theorem, there are two sides, left hand side and right hand side. Let's focus on left hand side. That is line integral of f along c. This kind of integral you have already done. So how to do it? First write it in the form of parameter t. You know this becomes dr over dt into dt. What is rt in the, for this curve c? This circle. What is rt for it? 3 cos t i cap plus 3 sin t z cap. t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Am I right? Yes. So what is f in terms of t? What is f in terms of t? y i cap minus x i cap. So what is, what is y here? 3 sin t x t is 3 cos t. So use these here. See what we get. You get 3 sin t 
i cap minus x j cap means 3 cos t j cap dot dr over dt that means minus 3 sin t i cap plus 3 cos t j cap dt limits of t are from 0 to 2 pi okay take the dot product then it's a function in t you can in integrate that with respect to t see what we get tell me your answer do you get minus 18 by You get minus 18 pi, am I right? Yes. Okay, you have calculated left hand side. Now go to the right hand side. What is the right hand side? Surface integral of Carlo F over this spherical surfaces. You know, to solve surface integral, you need parametrization of the spherical surface. To recall parametrization of spherical surface, I told you earlier. Hmm. What is parametrization of the spherical surface? This surface. R phi theta. Hmm? Yes, R phi theta. And what is the parametrization? 3 cos theta sin phi i cap. I am writing it for you. 3 sin theta sin phi z cap plus 3 cos phi t cap. And I think you also recall R phi cross R theta. What is that? You multiply this whole thing, whole thing by 3 sin phi. I told you a shortcut to remember this. Okay. Because the right hand side, if you see, it is outward flux. It is, you can say, outer flux of del cross f over s, right? So, you also need del cross f. But before that, let me remind you the formula. Del cross f, n cap d sigma goes to, if you are parametrizing by phi and theta, then it goes to r phi cross r theta. Dot d phi d theta. For hemisphere, what are the variations of phi and theta? For hemisphere, phi goes from 0 to pi by 2. And theta as usual, 0 to 2 pi. Now what is left? You need to determine del cross f and r phi cross r theta. r phi cross r theta I have already written. So see what do you get for del cross f. Hope you recall the calculation of curl of a vector field. You write i cap, j cap, k cap, then partial over partial x, partial over partial y, partial over partial z, then components of that y minus x and 0. Can you do that calculation yourself, please? See what we get. Do you get minus 2k cap? If you get it, that is correct. Dot this whole vector, 3 sin phi into this. You need to take dot product of k components only because it is not carrying i cap and j cap. So what is with k component? 3 sin phi into 3 cos phi, 9 sin phi cos phi minus 2 minus 18 sin phi cos phi double integral over these limits 0 to pi by 2 0 to 2 pi 
So you can manage this double entry code yourself and you will get the same answer. Even if you don't get, you have to write this answer because Stokes theorem is correct. You have to match the two sides. You are confident on left hand side. Right hand side should give you the same answer. If you are confident on both sides, that is very good. But anyway, you have to match the two answers. Got it? So with this statement, you have to do calculations for left hand side and right hand side to verify Stokes terms. Sometimes you are asked to solve right hand side using left hand side. In that case, just calculate left hand side. Okay, it depends on the problem. But it is a verification problem and you have done it. Okay, now let's see a problem on on divergence theorem. Verify divergence theorem for the vector field f equal to xi cap plus yz cap plus zk cap over the sphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to a square. You know it's a closed surface, spherical surface. So what is your region D enclosed by the sphere as is this outside surface of the cylinder. Sorry, sphere. Okay. So you to verify divergence theorem means you have to calculate this as well as this. So let's go to the left hand side first. What is it? Outer flux of F across this spherical surface S. So what should you do? You should you should parameterize this spherical surface just before I have written the parameterization. Okay? For spherical surface. So F dot R phi cross R theta R phi cross R theta D phi D theta. That is the formula for solving this. Phi theta limits, you know, phi goes for the full sphere, phi goes from 0 to pi, theta 0 to 2 pi. Now what is left to calculate? You need F on this spherical surface. So what is F on this spherical surface? You need to change these x, y, z in terms of phi and theta. So what is x? For example, A cos theta sin phi. Y A sin theta sin phi. Z a cos phi. So you know the components of that. You also know the component of components of R phi cross R theta. I wrote before. Take the dot product. See what they get. You should get a cube sin phi. Please check this calculation yourself. A cube sin phi. To simplify it further, this double integral, you will get 4 pi a cube. So I've solved the left hand side of the diagonal theorem. Okay. What about right hand side? For right hand side, what do you need to solve? Triple integral of divergence of f. What is divergence of f? 1 plus 1 plus 1. You know, for divergence, we differentiate i component with respect to x, y, j component with respect to y, k component with respect to z, and add the 3. Okay? Not v, I should write, not s, I should write v. 3 times 
d where v is the or d the symbols we are using it d so let me write d do you know this is the formula for volume of the sphere isn't it triple integral over the spherical region so it should be three times volume of the sphere what is volume of the sphere 4 by 3 pi a cube so you get what you see in the left hand side so that's how davinovich theorem is verified here if you have time you should do it properly you know how to solve this triple integral using spherical coordinates in spherical coordinates how this triple integral can be solved three times you put x equal to rho cos theta sin phi y equal to rho sin theta sin phi z equal to rho cos phi then you get jacobian rho square sin phi d rho d phi d theta this kind of integrals you have done in the chapter of multiple integrals limits of rho are 0 to a phi limits 0 to pi theta limits 0 to 2 pi you can solve this triple integral to get 4 over 3 pi a cube okay so davinovich theorem is verified left hand side and right hand side both are equal okay so what do you see here verification of davinovich theorem means one side you have to solve a surface integral other side a volume integral so if you are good at solving surface integrals there is no problem in verification of this theorem so you need to practice problems on surface integrals mainly because usually volume integral is easy let's see one more problem i will give you the hint only calculations you will do yourself verification of So we need to verify Davinovich's theorem for the vector field x square minus y z i k plus y square minus z x z k plus z square minus x y k k. Over the three D region given by the inequalities. Zero uh, less than equal to x less than equal to one. Zero less than equal to y less than equal to two. And zero less than equal to z less than equal to three. You understand? This is a cuboidal region. Cuboidal region like this. Now we need to verify Davinovich's theorem over this region. So what is the left hand side? You need outward flux of f across the whole surface of this cuboid. So, what are the dimensions here? One, two, three, right? One to three. So, how can you solve the left hand side? Remember that here the surface S means the whole surface of this cuboid. It is not smooth. It is smooth in pieces. The six faces of this cuboid are smooth. Which faces? We can name these O A B C, say E F, 
GH. Now we can divide it into six smooth pieces. S1 means let's say the lower face. What is lower face? O A B C. S2 the upper face E F G H. The lower face, the upper face. Okay. Likewise, right face, left face, front face, what is front face? A, B, E, H, and back face, O, C, F, C. Likewise, you can write six faces, okay? Calculate this integral over each face and add the six integrals. So let's focus on first integral over S1. If you want to use parametrization of the lower face, it is lying in a xy plane, z is 0 here. So on S1, what is your f? z is 0, z is 0 on S1. So f becomes x square i cap plus y square j cap plus z square k cap, right? Okay, what is the parameterization of this face? This is a surface lying in xy plane. Here z is 0, so parameterization is xi cap plus yz cap plus 0 k cap. So this formula becomes over the face OA, or you can write simply as so, OA B C. F, F becomes x square i cap plus y square j cap. Well, let me remind you that formula over S1, what should you write? F naught, if you are parametrizing by xy, rx cross ry dx dy. So F is this, what is rx cross ry? This is Rxy. What is Rx cross Ry? You have to determine it. If you determine it, you will get K cap. Is it? But remember that K cap is in this direction. You need outward pointing unit normal vector for the outer flux. Understand this important point. So you have to change the order here. Rx cross R by is K K, but you need to consider R Y cross R X here so that it points outwards. Minus K K. This side. Lower side. Though it will not change anything because it is not carrying K component. What is the dot product of these two? Zero. And uh, what are variations of xy? Though we don't need it. What are variations of xy in the lower phase? x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2. This time you get 0. The value of this integral is 0. Over phase S1 you have calculated. Likewise, go to phase S2. In case of S2, what is the situation? You will get it K cap. No problem. This time you can keep the same order. Okay? Here you have to change the order. Remember that you have to write Ry cross Rx. You can keep the same order Rx cross Ry, but this time your Z is in this phase. Z is 3. Z is 3. I'm removing these dimensions. Yeah, Z is 3. This is the phase parallel to XY plane where Z equal to 3. Correct? So now, what is F? If Z is 3, you can write this component, this component with Z equal to 3, but here it is 9 minus XY. It is 9 minus XY. 
So K component is carrying 9 minus XY and here it is K cap. So finally we will get 9 minus XY. Limits would be same and this time the double integral would not be 0. Alright? So this way I have given you the hint. Do these calculations yourself. This way you can calculate this surface integral over each phase. Finally add all the 6 integrals. You will get 36. Okay. So this is the calculation of left hand side in the Babbage theorem. What about what about right hand side? Left hand side is very lengthy. You have to solve six integrals to calculate left hand side. What about right hand side? Right hand side means you need triple integral of divergence of f over the region D enclosed by this cuboid. What is divergence of f? Take partial derivative of i component with respect to x, you get 2x, then you get 2y, then 2z, dx, dy, dz. Over the cuboidal region, it is very easy to write the limits in this case, 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3. A very simple triple integral, you can evaluate it yourself. I am writing the answer for you. 36. So here you need to solve only this triple integral. Very easy to calculate. So right hand side is easy. But for left hand side you need to solve 6 double integral. These surface integrals. Okay. Both should match. So that's how you can apply the divergence theorem. If it is not, say, spherical surface or something uh, like exit, I should tell. Say you have a cylindrical surface, closed cylinder of finite height. Say you have a cylinder, right circular cylinder of finite height. Say height h, radius of base is a. You want to verify the avalanche theorem over the cylinder. Then volume integral you understand, you can manage that. What about surface integral? This time how many smooth pieces are there? Upper circular region, say this is S2, lower circular region, S1 and the curved surface S3. So you have to break your surface integral for outward plugs in three parts. Each time you need to apply parametrization of the surface and solve the three surface integrals, finally add the three, okay? You understand there are three smooth pieces of the cylindrical surface. All right, so I've given you the hints, calculations you will do yourself. Hope you enjoyed all the lectures in this chapter. So from my side, this chapter is over. You need to practice some problems, after that you will be comfortable, okay? Thank you.